Hi, welcome everyone. You can move forward if you want. Um, so the idea of this talk is to uh, explain, based on a use case, how you can train usefully to get your blueprint accepted quicker. So the game here uh, for everyone is to fix bug, implement features, create consensus on an idea, find other developers, and so on. It's a game that is fairly easy. Anyone can play it. And most probably none of you have ever trained to do that. It does not mean that it's not worth training. But there is no training program at the moment, except the one that was created uh, a year ago, which is called Upstream University, which is basically uh, an idea of um, being together with the people who implement patches or blueprints to help them level up. So instead of discussing in theory how this should go, what I propose to you is that Swami here, who during the last cycle uh, proposed and implemented VPN as a service, which is a fairly complex blueprint, will tell you the story of how it went, and that will give you a base of, OK, this is how it should go. And then after that, I will tell you what training program you could use to follow the same path and maybe do your own blueprint within one cycle instead of two. So Swami, this is you. Welcome, everyone. Um, thank you, Loic. So what's a blueprint, and how do you create a blueprint? So looking at the picture here, OK, you may wonder, like, how big, how tall is this tower? Like, who built it? Like, does it take how many years to build it? Is it does it happen in a day, like in months, in weeks? So all these questions will actually linger in our mind when we try to look at these kinds of buildings. So assume a blueprint is like that, like for people who are new to blueprints, okay, they don't know what is blueprint and what they wanted to do, but all they have is an idea. And what is a blueprint? From a layman's perspective, when it's talk about blueprints, it's a big uphill task. We don't need to think about as an uphill task, but what we have to do is we have to think about what idea we have, how are we going to get there, and how do we do that in particular steps and particular order. The reason I'm here is like six months back, I was at the same shoes as you guys were. Like people who wanted to submit a blueprint were thinking how to submit a blueprint. So I was at the same board, like how do I do submit a blueprint, how, how it would be accepted, what are the procedures it takes, uh, where should I start and where should I end. So those things were all like, there's, there's no such, there's, there's a website out there for developers, okay, if you want to contribute code, this is what you should do. But all it says is, okay, submit a blueprint. And, and the steps that you have to take. But most of the things that I'm going to talk here uh, is going to touch base on those steps. But apart from that, there are going to be some additional things that, um, that are mandatory or a kind of a adds value to your blueprint when you submit those things. So um, again, when, when you wanted to submit a blueprint, think how big is the, is the task, OK? Did it happen in a single day? No, it will not happen in a single day. But the idea may arise in a single day. But you wanted to capture that idea and then enhance it, enhance that idea, and present it in a way so that people understands it or appreciates the blueprint. And people who are reading the blueprint should get an impression that, OK, there is some value in this feature or in this bug fix uh, patch that you're trying to upload. Uh, or it may be a, a new plugin or a new feature that you're trying to add. Um, so that those things, as soon as someone sees and takes a look at the blueprint, they should immediately grasp that. So that's where we are here, like how do we need to do that? So again, planning is very important for doing any kind of things. All of a sudden, you cannot just say in one day, just push a blueprint. And is it effortless? I don't say it's effortless. There is some work that you have to do, like in your spare time, you get an idea, in a spare time, you need to spend some extra time in order to write that in details and then submit it as a blueprint. And effort-wise, implementing the blueprint 
it's not like when you submit a blueprint and if it gets accepted, um, if it is a big task, you are not the only person who is going to implement it. It's going to be divided into multiple tasks. So it's just a story point, okay? This is one big story that you have. I need to build a big tower, and then that's a big story point, but how do you achieve that? So you have an idea, so do a rough sketch of any idea. So take notes whenever possible. Um, take some hints. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, this is the idea that I'm going to submit. Do some quick prototypes, if possible. Prototypes are always not required when you submit a blueprint, but if you have a theoretical idea, and if you have validated your theoretical idea uh, with respect to the existing design, and if you think if it is right, just go ahead and submit it. Prototypes are, um, I, I would not say that it's, it's a must before submitting a, a blueprint. It, it, it helps you uh, speeding up the process in submitting your code, but not the blueprint. Because the initial blueprint that you are submitting, as I said, it's a big story block. It's not the actual task that you're going to work on. So publish your blueprint. As soon as you write your uh, snapshot of whatever ideas that you have, write it in simple words in a paragraph, write a blueprint, and then say, what is the problem description that you're trying to attack? And by doing that, what's your solution and how it is going to help OpenStack or the audiences of OpenStack? So that's all they wanted in the blueprint. So once you do that, just go ahead and submit it. And before submitting it, there is also one thing that you can pay attention to. You can check if there, are, if there is any other blueprint that have been submitted in the same area of interest that you have. If there are other blueprints that have been submitted in the same area of interest that you have, take a look at the blueprint and see where you are deviating from the other blueprint. Even if it is the same idea, don't feel free bad saying that, okay, that idea has been already captured by someone. I don't want to submit the blueprint. What I'm suggesting is go ahead and file the blueprint, even if it is of the same idea. Because when you submit the blueprint, as I said, it's a big story point. It may end up that there are multiple people can work on. And multiple people having the same ideas, if they see that, then you will be also provided a chance to submit your code, or you will be, your blueprint will be accepted to do the implementation. Yes? Uh, yes. So what, what you can do is, um, there, are, there are two ways. Yeah, I think the question what he asked is, uh, because he didn't have a microphone, I'm just repeating it. Um, if you see that there is another blueprint that has been submitted, which is of the same idea that you have, um, will you submit a blueprint or will you actually participate in the discussion, review discussion of the original blueprint and take participation on that original blueprint? That was his question. That's a good question. I think you can do it either way. If you miss it, if you never paid attention to the existing blueprints and if you have submitted your blueprint, then it's okay, you don't worry about that. You will be automatically included in all the discussions because you are also an interested party on that same idea. If you are not submitting a blueprint and if you see another blueprint and if you, are, if you wanted to participate in that implementation work, then you can actually do the review of the blueprint and provide your feedback and by that you can be part of the team. There are two ways of approaching it. Either you want to be a part of a team where, um, in, in that case, in the second case, what happens is um, you may not get much of an exposure, okay? You will be under the covers working in a sub-team. Um, but um, if you submit a blueprint, then you have uh, a chance of having an exposure, uh, saying that, okay, you are the guy who implemented the other blueprint, and if there is any changes, then people can talk with you and you will be automatically included in any of the discussions or in summit dis design summit discussions. Uh, so that, that is for sure. So um, again, as I mentioned, you have an idea, so there you go, you, you are ready for a blueprint, okay? So then go ahead and, and capture your ideas. An idea can be as simple as an enhancement to an existing feature, so if you see there is an existing feature out there and if you want to enhance something in that existing feature, then just write a note on that. That's an idea, again. 
just write it down and then submit a blueprint and say this is the problem I'm seeing in this feature and this enhancement will help address these issues and that's where I wanted to uh, provide this blueprint. Again, an idea can be as complex as a new feature or a, or a plugin or even a bug fix. So for any, all those things, each task that you are going to do um, is being monitored by the blueprint that you write or, or a wiki page. So a blueprint can be a document or it can be a wiki page. So preferably, initially while starting, you start up with a doc and then once you are um, approved and ready to implement, then you actually transition from a doc to a wiki page. Uh, wiki page is the most preferred one uh, through OpenStack so people can view it at one single point. Docs, it's, it's difficult to upload docs, so you have to have it in a different repository so people don't like it. Um, the community doesn't want that to happen, but for, um, to, a, to have a starting point, you can do that as a doc, but while moving forward, then you have to transition to wiki. But the, the, the reason I'm telling this is like for people who wanted to do that uh, at one shot, if you don't have enough time, just write a wiki page. Don't do a doc, just write a wiki page. That way you don't need to transition uh, back and forth. So um, as I said, um, your blueprint should capture what problem or idea you're trying to solve. How does it matter for the community? Um, the problem that you're trying to describe and the solution that you're trying to provide. So these things has to be very clear and crisp. So that way when people are reading it, they know okay what you're trying to address and that will actually give them more um, thought or interest in actually going through the details, other solutions. If even the abstract or the initial thing is not crisp enough to go and read it, um, reviewers or some people may not even take a look at it. It's just, just, just it'll be browsing. Thing. So if you want someone to pay attention, um, just make sure that your blueprint has all, uh, all these things. And, and again, um, the reason I, I'm talking about this one is, um, when we say um, an idea and submitting a blueprint, uh, there are, um, as Loic mentioned, there are some technical people here, there are some managers here, and um, there are, most of us are related to technical areas, and we have, we all have technical skills on our own expert areas, and technical skills are enough to get an idea or capture those ideas, but the problem is we, apart from the technical skills, we need some soft skills uh, in order to put together everything and present it in a way that everyone can accept it. So technical skills are a must. No one is saying that technical skills is not required. I would say like 70, 30 in this case, 70% of technical skills you want and a 30% you need some soft skills in order to work with a larger community um, like OpenStack. And basically, um, as Laik mentioned, um, six months back, I, I was in the, in the same area as, as you people are interested in, where I, I didn't get a chance like whom to up, approach to, uh, how to submit these things. I had the technical concept, I have written down the technical notes, but, but how do I present it? The soft skills came from the training that I attended from Upstream uh, University, uh, which was a two day class. Um, it was a free class when I attended uh, six months back in Portland. Um, so. It was very useful for me. When I came to that class, I came with a notion saying that, okay, they're going to teach me how to code. They're going to teach me um, how to debug the problems in OpenStack. They're going to teach me how to uh, view any of the issues that I'm having in OpenStack. But it was entirely different. It was not that. It, it was the soft skills that they teach you, how to approach people, how to put your blueprint, how to present the blueprint. The reason that you're seeing these slides in here, like what, how to describe your problem, how to provide a solution, was actually, the, this were the, these were the ideas or knowledge that I gained from the soft skills. So that would actually definitely help um, boost your blueprint. I would not say that you just by soft skills you can do what you want, but it, as I said, it's a 70-30. You still need the soft skills in order to be a winner. You don't, you don't want to just submit a blueprint. It's just a story point there lying in the launch pad. No one looks at it. If you want someone to take a look at it, you need uh, the other 30% that I'm talking about. So uh, again, um, you, it may also, uh, you may also need to capture how is it related to your business decisions. Um, like basically it focuses on enterprise customers, uh, cloud offering, um, what does it 
focus on. So in my example, like the blueprint that I submitted was basically um, a VPN. Um, so it's a, and then when I submitted a blueprint, there was these questions were actually initially asked um, to me by the upstream university. Okay, you're going to submit this blueprint. Okay, how is it going to help you? Why did you choose VPN? Why not anything else for secure communications? So because VPN is a proven technology at that time, that's why, um, and it has been used by all enterprise customers for a long, long, long time. So um, there is no such a new invention in there, but um, the invention there is basically, the idea there is to put everything together, have an abstraction layer to configure and deploy these services um, in an existing uh, OpenStack Neutron environment. So that was the reason um, we added all those things. So this is an example like how I did um, my blueprint presentation. So again, um, when you present a blueprint, make sure you have your use cases covered. The first thing that um, the community is going to watch is basically what use cases or what problems um, that you are trying to solve. So in this case, um, in my uh, thing, I had like two different use cases, like site-to-site -site communications and uh, remote user communications. So these, these are use cases that your complete story point is trying to um, attack. But these can be sliced down into multiple tasks, like one as a site-to-site -site and one as a uh, remote users. One task will be done at, at, a, at a particular point. The other task can be done at a different point. And both the tasks can be done by, by one person or it can be done by multiple persons. Or even one task can be split up into multiple smaller tasks. So that way, um, you, you, do, you do need to capture all the uh, use cases. The reason um, I'm saying you need to capture the use cases is um, your blueprints will be prioritized based on your use cases. It will not be just based on a high level story point that will be prioritized. Based on use cases, uh, each use case will be prioritized and based on your prioritization, you start implementing it. So again, um, your, your blueprint uh, may cover the use cases and apart from the use cases, it can also uh, provide a high level overview of uh, how you are trying to uh, solve this problem with your solution. Uh, what kind of data, data model you have, what are the API definitions, CLI, uh, test cases and dependencies. I would say that these are all um, even um, a secondary option. Um, initially, um, these are, you don't need to spend too much of time on defining all these things. If you have more time, I would recommend go ahead and do that. But if you don't have enough time to do this one, um, just leave it there, put a use case, and if you have an idea, capture it, capture your solution, go ahead with this one. The reason I'm saying is your CLI, API, all those things may change when you have a discussion with your peers, when you have a discussion with the community. Community can come up and say, okay, you need to change this, you need to change this, because we need to come with an agreement with the community. It's not your own idea that's going to go through the community. So your idea is what you have captured and thrown it into the uh, storybook. And once it's in the storybook, it can be now rewritten or refactored to address and, and um, to get all the feedback from the community people. So that way, don't, don't spend too much of time in putting more details on the blueprint. Uh, it, it can be uh, very high level, um, just with object model if you want, you can include object model. But CLI level, API level, uh, always will change because based on customer's feedback. I've seen like CLI and API definitions change even during the implementation phase, like phase three. Okay, so it can change anytime. So don't worry about those things. So uh, how do you, uh, again, register your blueprint? You have a blueprint now. Now you have to actually push the blueprint to the upstream. So you, you create a Launchpad account, which this has already been in the developer's um, website. Create a Launchpad account, submit your blueprints through a Launchpad. So again, assign the blueprint to a particular milestone. Don't leave it there as such. The problem is when you submit a blueprint, there is an option that you can actually assign your uh, blueprint to a milestone. Uh, if you leave it without a milestone, uh, people who are reading it may get a conclusion that uh, you are not very much interested in working on this for the next release, and you're just throwing in your idea, and you're, you don't care about that idea. So I would recommend that um, while you post that, make sure um, you actually assign a, a milestone release, the next milestone, ISOs, or a J uh, house that we are going to attend. And again, assign an approver for the blueprint, so that approver will get notified that when you post a blueprint, and then he will actually go and review your blueprint. Otherwise, no one is going to watch your blueprint. Yes? Uh, how do you know if you're 
Uh, if you are submitting, say for example, if you are submitting uh, your blueprint for uh, NOVA or, or specifically for Neutron or for specifically um, Ceph, anything. So you know the PTLs or you know the core members who are there, who are approvers. Select one of them. It can be random. You don't need to even talk to them. You just select one of them and say he is your approver. It doesn't need to be a specific person. Um, it, it, it should basically align with your own uh, group or project that you are trying to contribute to. And then, um, so the blueprint, as I said, whatever you are throwing up on the launch pad is basically um, a, a backlog story point. That will be there forever, and it will not be addressed until you create another submit session registration. Basically, for the summits like this, for every six months, there is a design summit that, uh, that happens. And for design summit, if you want your blueprint to be discussed in the design summit, make sure you resubmit your blueprint for the design summits. Because if you don't resubmit for the design summit, if you just throw it in the launch pad, it's just in a backlog. No one is going to look at it. Unless there is a, an, another blueprint with the same idea, then that person will try to pull in you on all the discussions, and he's going to now go and present it into the summit sessions. So make sure you submit it for the summit sessions. So summit sessions, normally, um, that website opens up a month before the summit, so make sure you are looking at watching the emails or attending the meetings. And once you attend the meetings, you will be notified of when they open and when they close the summit dates. So when they open, just go ahead and submit it on this link. So these are the links. Um, the, the top link, the Launchpad link, is for capturing your backlog, and the second link is for uh, submitting it for a summit session. And uh, after you submit, um, I don't want uh, just to say, OK, I have submitted. Everything is done. I'll be called by OpenStack people and say, hey, you guys go and implement it. That's not going to happen. So basically, when you submit it, you need to monitor uh, what's the status of your blueprint, because there is a status flag on blueprints that you can actually monitor uh, when you when you Submit it for the design review summit. There is a status that says either accepted, unreviewed, or uh, rejected, or approved, or pre-approved. Uh, so those are the statuses that you can see. So if, based on your status, you can just take the next action. Um, normally, if your status is, is, has been refused, also you have the right to ask, OK, why, why was it refused? What was the reason it was refused? I, and, the, and for all those things, you need to have a log of what you did with the OpenStack. Uh, it is always best to maintain a log, what you did, whatever actions that you're doing. When you submit a blueprint, just go ahead and first submit the blueprint, send an email to the distribution list for the developer's distribution list saying that, okay, this is the blueprint that I've submitted. Persons who are interested in that, please go and review the blueprint. And wait for a week. If you don't see any response from the community, send another mail. Again, wait for a, a one week. Then I would recommend go to the join the IRC meeting for the, for your particular project. In the IRC meeting, copy paste your um, mail that you sent out or the review doc link and say I have posted a, a, a blueprint. I have not heard anything from the review comments. So please, if possible, can anyone go ahead and review it? So that way, your actions are being captured. And if there is a valid reason for your refusal, then you can accept the refusal. If it is, there is no valid reason, then you can actually go talk to them and see what's the uh, problem with that. Most of the time, it should not happen, but yes. When it is refused, you can ask them, like, why is, was it refused? There may be some reason, okay, there is another blueprint of, of the same type, okay? What they will say is, okay, you two submitters, blueprint submitters, you talk to each other, and then you come up with a single blueprint. So for example, in my case, when I submitted the VPN, there was like um, four blueprints on VPN. And I had the same problem. I, I, I had to go through the same problem. Initially, it said it, uh, it, the status changed to discussion. And during the summit time, one week before the summit time, the status changed to refused. The reason I, I saw in the email was it said, OK, there are multiple people who have submitted, so just come up with the one single blueprint. You need to come up with a consensus. If there are multiple parties, you need to come up with a uh, consensus with the multiple parties. So once you come up with a consensus, then you will automatically be part of the implementation sub-team. So that, that way you can work it out. So again, um, as I said, if, the, if you find multiple blueprints, 
Start having discussions with your peers uh, who have submitted the blueprints. So once you start the meetings, you, you organize meetings, talk to them what, what is wrong, what is right, what you wanted, if, it, if everything is in alignment. And then once you have it, then you finalize on the use cases, which use case you are going to target for the first release. Then try to um, slice down the use case uh, in different tasks, and then finalize the features. So blueprint details, as I already mentioned, uh, it need not be detailed. Uh, just submit the ideas with, uh, with the problem solver and solution. Uh, it, it can be in a Word document, uh, or it can be in a wiki. Preferred format is wiki. I think I discussed that one. So again, reaching consensus with the community. So this is the major part that yeah, we all have to understand. Um, first of all, we have to be um, very polite and gentle with the community. Be patient with what uh, your, you wanted to expect. Uh, don't be harsh with the community. Uh, just send gentle emails and gen talk gently when you are on phones. So don't expect anyone to take a phone and talk to you in OpenStack. So that is not going to happen unless you form a sub-team. Um, when you are just submitting a blueprint, everything is, should go through IRC and email exchanges. Don't expect anyone to go um, take a phone and talk because you are not going to get the numbers because you are dealing with people uh, across the country, across the world. So um, there are people from different countries um, dialing in, working on the same feature. So you have to try to uh, come up with IRC chat, learn how to do the IRC chat, and that's how you can communicate things. People are there um, every time, it's because across the time, time zones. So you, you can get help from any people whenever you want from the IRC. So once the team agrees on the features and use cases, then, then your sub-team will be identified, as I said. Then the task will be split. And the, the owner of the specific task, then they have to rewrite the blueprint for that particular task as a wiki page with all the details, like API, data model specifications. All those information will then go there. So as I said, in the initial step that you took, it's, it's an overall thing that you're trying to put together. You can throw in your ideas, but those ideas over the course of uh, this approval process will change. And what I'm saying by will change is um, you have to be, have a mindset that it's going to change. Don't have a mindset that it will never change and I will not allow it to change. You should be in a position to accept changes and willing to work with multiple people, listen to others, then make changes and submit it. So uh, uh, this one I already covered. Uh, as I mentioned, we need, you need technical and soft skills. Yes. Yes. It's, uh, so once you have, um, normally when, when you, you will find out a lead, whoever has submitted the first blueprint or whoever is working across uh, the team members. So they will actually uh, try to lead the feature discussions or whatever it is, and they will be the lead, and they will actually, it's, there is nothing uh, called lead in this case, okay, except for the core members. Other people are all flat developers in this case. There's no kind of lead. But people who organize meetings and try to pull in more people, that's what I, I mentioned by lead, but don't think that uh, there is a lead and they don't work. Everyone develops code. Yes, yes. So they, they, you try to work with them, and then they find out who are all the interested parties. So these things even happen in the summit, OK? In the design summit, you go there, you attend a session, and, and they talk about it, and they say, OK, whoever is, is interested in implementing it, you raise your hands, then you become a member of the sub-team. So I think now um, Loic will take over and see uh, how he, uh, you can achieve the soft skill as I did. Uh, thank you, Swami, for this crash course into uh, what it involves to have a blueprint accepted. So you have a choice. You, you can just remember uh, all the advices that Swami, through his experience, gave uh, right now. Or what I propose is that uh, you can get training at Upstream University, and that will help. So the way we go uh, for this training is on a real example, getting involved in free software, in theory, uh, is easy. There is almost nothing to say. But in practice, it proves to be difficult. 
So the students for the upstream university course, they come with what they actually want to achieve. When Swami came with the VPN as a service blueprint, it was by far the most complex uh, goal that we had. Uh, it succeeded, but it was very different from the other students. Yes. Well, it's never sure, but uh, Swami was able to do that, yes. So uh, you, you never know, uh, there is no guarantee, but it helps to be trained. So the key is you come with an actual work that you want to do. Now, the, the problem with the actual work is uh, the format of a training is like two days, but you won't get your blueprint accepted in two days. Even a patch won't be accepted in two days. So we structure the course so that there is online follow-ups until the work is finished. So in the case of Swami, the goal was the blueprint needs to be scheduled for the next cycle. So it took about three weeks, I think. So after three weeks, uh, I was in Paris. He was uh, in, his, uh, in the US, and uh, we drank champagne uh, remotely. So the way uh, the course uh, goes is the first day, live day, is divided in two. Um, the, during the morning, we go over the chronological uh, order of a contribution. So it's, uh, I put slides, they are theoretical slides, such as who are you going to talk to? And every student already has a topic in mind. So they relate that to what they are going to uh, try to achieve. They think about uh, who they are going to talk to. And we have that kind of interaction during the first morning. In the afternoon, we try something completely different. We do a simulation. That is, we pretend that a Lego town is a free software project, and we have fun being contributors and upstreams around this Lego town. So it's always fun to play with Lego, but the, the, the goal of this simulation is really to reveal the weak points that we, you will likely uh, need to fight when you do the actual contribution. And since it's a game, you don't feel too bad when you see that you lack communication skills. It's just you know that maybe you're shy, or as I am, I'm not a native English speaker, so it's a problem, and it triggers communication problem. During this simulation, you can figure that out. And the second day, we do the planning and practice. So no longer theory, not simulation, we go down to work. So the students, every student, is handed uh, 11 uh, slides deck, where they have to prepare during one hour uh, how they will go about the contribution. And then they come on stage and they present uh, these slides to the rest of the students who get to comment and give them advice, see a different perspective of the contribution. Since each topic is different, you, you have diversity during this morning. In the afternoon, we prepare for the online sessions that will follow up. So we, uh, we make sure the tools, uh, it's mostly IRC, are, uh, are OK. We agree on a date for the first meeting. And uh, that's about it. If there is more time, then we just get to work. And that's the end of the live session. After that, the online sessions is basically uh, like Agile. When you organize your work, uh, uh, in an agile team, you do stand-up meetings. So let's say uh, you work uh, every day on your contribution, then you will have uh, maybe every day uh, an online mentoring session of one hour. So the goal is you explain to the mentor what you did. And the mentor does not uh, get to say anything, just you expose what you did, you passed URLs, dialogues, etc., And the mentor tries to uh, understand exactly where you are. In the second phase, that is the most important phase, the mentor is either assigned the task of unblocking you if you are blocked. So a very common blocker is, I try to talk to people, they won't talk to me. 
I don't understand. Uh, I tried to be gentle, I tried to nag them, yeah, but that just doesn't happen. So the, the matter is, in this case, engaging a dialogue with the student to try to find a solution. And when we are two trying to fight uh, a battle in the free software field, 99% of the time it works. We're not in a hostile environment where a blocker is definitive. The other situation for the mentoring session is when you have no blocker at all, and then the task of the mentor is to help you improve. That is to say, if you just have a bug and you know how to fix bugs, you took this bug for the training, and usually that kind of bug takes you three weeks. So the mentor will try to find ways for you to fix the same bug in half the time. Maybe reduce the number of mails you have to go to. Maybe because he's an external uh, eye to your contribution, he will see that you spend uh, more time because you don't explain enough in the commit messages. It's a, also a very common drawback. You, you fix the bug, and then in the commit message, you say, oh, fixed bug. But you, you have to explain the rationale, the choices you made. May, the matter may help you flesh out your comment in the commits, and all of a sudden, your patches will be accepted quicker. Now, if you are a member of a company, if you're a manager and you want your team to follow that kind of training, uh, you're welcome to uh, subscribe them to Upstream University. But if you are an employee and your manager doesn't see any value in this training, you can still attend for free. And if you're lucky enough to be in a, new, uh, in a university, I know it's uncommon for people who come to the OpenStack Summit to be students from university, although there are some, thanks to the uh, sponsorship program uh, of the OpenStack Foundation, uh, you may find such a course in your university. In France, there are two universities offering such a course. And now I believe we have a few minutes. Do we or, yeah, we have about three minutes for questions, if you have some. One, two, yes. Uh, you, I think you don't need to uh, come to a con uh, I think the question here is, uh, if he is submitting a big feature, and if he assumes that it's going to prolong for more than uh, one cycle, meaning uh, six months or one year or one and a half years, uh, what he thinks is, um, how, do we, how do you assign it to a particular cycle, isn't it? No, I think uh, what, the, uh, what you have to do is, in that case, if you think your story point is big enough, you basically assign it to the next release cycle, whatever is the next release cycle. And then put your use cases and try to split down your use cases, OK? Anyway, your use cases will be based on features, OK? If you have like 10 different features, write 10 different use cases, and then go present it to the design community. And then while you are presenting, you say, OK, these are the 10 different features. How do you want me to prioritize it for the next release, OK? You take like baby steps. Step one, OK, you implement out of the 10 features, like five features. Step two, you implement another three features, and then the rest, give it to the other one. Yes, you can have dependencies. And if you have dependencies, you can say, these are my dependencies. And I'm going to assign this as a dependency as for my blueprint. Yes. The, yeah, most of the time what happens is you have to communicate with the other uh, team and talk to them if you can actually uh, work together while you are working, rather than waiting for them to complete. Because normally in OpenStack, what it happens, in parallel you communicate it and make sure your design accepts those changes. OK. Julie, yeah. your turn. You, you're uh, you're uh, last. So one, two, three. Okay. Julie, please. So the question is, 
is Upstream University focused on OpenStack or does it work for other free software projects? The thing is, uh, it actually works for any kind of free software project. There is nothing specific to OpenStack in the Upstream University training. The soft skills that you get out of Upstream University universally apply to all free software projects that are healthy. That is where you have a community. <laughs> Now, if you have a project that is very sick, it won't cure it. Dave. So, Swami mentioned the writing phone and preferring IRC. Do you have any tips for people who are in time zones that are incompatible with the rest of the critical mass of developer options? And in parallel, do you have any tips specifically uh, to get people over perhaps cultural issues with Japanese or Asian and Korean uh, So, I think. Yeah, I, what they have is like, um, if, if there are people from different countries and if the sub-team spans multiple countries, if there are two or more people, they normally, uh, sometimes I've seen, they come together, have a get together, they talk, uh, and then try to implement it. And basically, when you, when you split those kind of tasks, make sure that you're aligning that task to a specific zone or specific uh, people. But that, that's not uh, really healthy in that case because people wanted to span across the world. That's the reason for OpenStack. But if you want it to be, uh, if you want to get rid of that language barrier uh, without going through IRC. But IRC is, is the one preferable thing that I would say. It works so far, but. So re regarding the time zone problem, it's, it's an awful one. I'm, uh, I became this year a uh, core contributor to the Ceph project. And there are people in Asia, and in the US, and in Europe. And the only uh, way we came up, uh, you know, for the summit, for instance, we have an online summit every three months. And uh, we organize it in two half days with overlapping time zones that include those. So one half day has overlapping time zones for Europe and the US, and the other half day with Asia and the US, it, and it's a mess. So I don't, I don't know if there is any solution to that. It's a real problem. Yes, sir, last question. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, can you repeat it, the it, question? If please? the feature is big enough, like a VPN as a service, uh, what he says is, will it be immediately accepted for implementation, or it will be in incubation for a while, and then will be done later? Is that a question? Uh, yeah. yeah. So most probably, um, whether a feature has to be in incubation or a feature has to be immediately implemented, it all depends upon the community feedback. If the community feels that this feature is a must and a desired feature that they want, they're, they want this feature yesterday, but they're still waiting for this feature. Then uh, if you have submitted an idea which actually correlates with that feature, then they will actually give you a, a, a green flag on go ahead and implement that feature. If the community desire is not there for that feature, there may be uh, like a one or two persons raising their hands and saying, oh, yeah, I may be interested in this one. Then it may be in an incubation phase. You have to incubate it and make sure that other parties are interested in it come together, get together the party, and then try to bring it up. Uh, you can create desire during the summit. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very guys. much.